What made this new science of air so revolutionary was that it threatened to topple the reigning theory of chemistry, a theory inspired by the mystery of fire. Most chemists believed fire was due to some fiery principle that was given up during combustion. And all our senses seem to confirm this idea. Heat, light, smoke, all are released as the fire burns. By the mid-1700s, this essence of fire had been given a name. Phlogiston. Phlogiston was the foundation of chemistry's leading theory for nearly a century because it seemed to explain things like metals and rust. When iron ore was heated in the presence of charcoal, phlogiston from the charcoal fused with the ore to form metallic iron. When the iron was exposed to air or water, the metal released its phlogiston as it rusted. Other metals went through the same process, forming the green verdigris of copper, for example. Ore plus phlogiston equals metal. Metal minus phlogiston equals rust, or what was then called a calx. Only there was a problem. The calx was heavier than the metal. Even though phlogiston had left the metal, it's lost something and yet it was heavier. The calx should weigh less than the original metal. But it doesn't. The calx is heavier than the metal. Though many chemists were aware of this contradiction, they let it pass because phlogiston otherwise worked so well. But Lavoisier was really troubled by this because he was obsessed with the weights of his experimental ingredients. Lavoisier was very careful to get very good instruments. He probably at one point had the largest and most complete private laboratory on Earth. With my precision scales, imported from England at great expense, I measured the weight of each substance at the beginning and end of every chemical reaction. Lavoisier was a master of this balance sheet kind of chemistry. Remember, he was a tax administrator by day. He knew a lot about accounting, and so this kind of ledger keeping was natural to him. It is a fundamental truth of chemistry that the same amount of matter exists before and after each experiment. Nothing new is created, nothing lost. The whole art of performing chemical experiments rests on this principle. Today we call this idea the conservation of matter. When you carry out a chemical reaction, what comes out has to be exactly equal to what goes in. The total weight must remain precisely the same if not, there's an error somewhere. He wasn't the first to assume conservation of matter, but Lavoisier applied this idea more rigorously than anyone had before. And it worked very effectively as a tool, a tool of discovery. 